As healthcare professionals, we have a responsibility to report abuse. Here are a few identifiers of abuse and neglect in children. They are often left home alone or in the neighborhood for long periods without supervision. They are frequently hungry, dressed inadequately for the weather, and not receiving needed medical attention. If a relative or friend suspects that the children are in danger, it should be reported to the County Department of Family and Children's Services, also known as DFACS. There are a number of ways to report suspected abuse. If a child is in immediate danger, like being beaten or left alone overnight, call the police. In all other cases, make a report to the DFACS office in the county where the child lives. You don't have to be positive that maltreatment has occurred. You can simply report what you've seen or heard. You'll be asked for the name and location of the child and the name of the suspected perpetrator. Reports are confidential and you don't have to give your name, but it's helpful to the child in the long run if you're willing to give your name and address and if necessary, testify in court. If a child is under 18, DFACS will begin investigating immediately. If the child is not in imminent danger, a caseworker will visit the family within five days. Did you see that little boy Edwin who came in? Hard to miss. He should have been here weeks ago for that injury. And he mentioned staying at home alone overnight last night. I'm going to report this to DFACS. Wait, what if we're wrong? We don't have to know for certain that mistreatment is happening. We can just share what we observed and they'll look into what's going on and make sure he's safe. Elder abuse is any abuse inflicted upon an elderly individual. The relationship of the abuser to the abuse does not matter. A relative, friend, healthcare provider or stranger can all be guilty of elder abuse. The danger of the abuser relative to the abuse also doesn't matter. An elder can be abused by another elder. Here are a few things that might indicate an older adult is being abused. Changes in their behavior or emotional state like agitation, apathy, withdrawal, fear, or anxiety. Comments about being mistreated or the caregiver not wanting the older person to visit with you alone. Healthcare providers, nurses, hospital personnel, dentists, school personnel, daycare personnel, social workers and counselors are all required by law to report suspected elder abuse. If you have a reason to suspect elder abuse, a referral to the appropriate social worker is made and the basis of the referral is noted in the patient's file. First, the social worker will interview the patient, the patient's family, and anyone else involved in the patient's care. Next, the social worker will assess potential harm or danger in the patient's home environment. Lastly, the social worker may involve appropriate community agencies like protective services or law enforcement. Hi, Janine. I had an older patient today who I'm concerned about. She said she doesn't feel safe at home and she was acting really different from the last time I saw her. Thanks for calling. Even if you aren't sure if this is elder abuse, you're mandated to report when you have a reasonable cause to believe there's been abuse. I'm glad I called. What happens now? First, I'll interview the patient and her caregivers. Then, if needed, I will get the authorities involved. Would you be willing to testify if needed? Yes, of course. Let me know how I can help. When we know what to look for and what steps to take, we can play an important part in preventing abuse in children and older adults. Thank you for participating in our Preventing Abuse in Children and Elders module.